This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Wicked. Trees are one of those things that is hard to find a balance between. For dioramas you can go ultra realistic, but then you end up making something that is ultra fragile. I would show my diorama trees, but none of them have survived. And tabletop gaming trees, which are usually these hard plastic armatures with clump foliage attached, but they sacrifice a lot in the way of realism. And therein lies our brief for this video. On the one hand, I want the tree to look good, but on the other hand, I want it to be able to take a bump. Not just any bump. These need to be able to be thrown in a box, thrown on the wargaming table, then thrown in a box again, and they need to get dropped and then they need to get sat on. So how do we make these, and how do we do it in under an hour? Well, it all begins with a big snake hedgehog boy. I can attest that these things are not the easiest to cut, However, I can definitely assure you the rest of this project is pretty low intensity. First, remove the spines with scissors to reveal our base trunk. I'm going for a definite fantasy silhouette and profile with these, not quite as short and dumpy as like the, the late 90s Games Workshop fantasy trees were, but a similar sort of stout profile. Next, mix up some epoxy or air drying clay. Gently. And form yourself a trunk. Nothing too fancy. And if you have a wire brush, great. You've saved yourself 30 seconds. If you don't, a pen or a pencil is gonna do. Take your time not to pull the clay apart and don't think too much about positioning the lines. Remember, nature don't give a shit, so why should you? Manscaping time. Here is where I'm carving out the profile for my trees. Short and fat, tall and thin, tall and fat, short and thin, whichever you fancy. Now when I took these outside to prime, that was where this project fell apart a little bit. The mistake I made was spraying all of the branches with a light apple greeny colour. And because the branches do not get 100% covered, once they're covered in foliage, foliage, you can see that it's just clearly wire underneath. If I'd sprayed these a dark brown, I think these would look at least, at least 5% better. The choice to spray the trunk in grey rather than brown was a solid choice, however. And speaking of solid choices, I need to take a temperate second to talk to you about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. I've been using Skillshare for over a month now, and even though I was only thinking of taking one class, I've actually taken four or five. My Unreal 5 journey is still ongoing, and I'm learning stuff about the in-engine camera controls and lighting and making pretty grass and trees. But I also took a class from Marques Brownlee, who shared his methods and tricks for making YouTube content and how he approaches each project. I made some notes along the way and I've already started to incorporate some of these ideas into my workflow. The benefit of the Skillshare platform is that it isn't clicks, ads and retention motivated. I can sit there and listen to someone who knows what they're doing in a class that feels like it's designed for me. And that does mean every class I take, I actually feel like I've learned something. And if you're curious about what Skillshare has to offer for you, the first 1,000 people to use the link down below in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. One month free trial Skillshare. So check it out. Right, let's get back to the pine trees. I'm Commander Shepard and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. Oh, 
Our next step is to get some tacky glue on there. I usually leave this stuff about five to 10 minutes before applying the base leaf coverage layer. Which colours am I using exactly? Well, I'm not telling you. Partly because it doesn't really matter and mostly because I don't actually remember. We want to add some highlights and variation to these trees, I think. So a light coating of any kind of scenic sealant or watered down PVA is going to get spattered across the surface. And then we dust with a lighter colour of flock. Making sure not to push it too far into the body of the tree. A little group scenic basing for these guys is going to go a long way in helping put them over as slightly above average tabletop trees, I say slightly. So I'm going to take an extra 20-25 minutes to get these done. But I haven't quite figured out how to make this lovely woodland scenic stuff look nice once it's sealed. Once it's sealed, everything seems to get really dark and it just stays dark. It's been a few months since I actually made these uh, and they don't seem to be getting any brighter now that they're dry. Which sucks, man. Yeah. I thought it'd be really simple, but this stuff is definitely not designed to be sealed down and used in a tabletop wargaming environment. Maybe in the next video, when I come back to this stuff, I can kind of tackle this and figure out, is there a way to keep the bright, nice, fluffy colors, but keep it wargame safe? I'm gonna try. But the trees, the trees I'm, I'm really happy with, apart from the brightly colored branches, which I can't undo at this point. However, they only take an hour. I can just make some fucking more. Of course, you may be saying to yourself, well, you used air drying clay that definitely took longer than an hour. And yes, it did take longer than an hour, but I don't count drying and curing times as project time. While I was waiting for the clay and the sealant to dry, I was sat on my arse eating Greg's sausage rolls playing Elden Ring. So, you know, I might be self-employed, but I don't actually take the piss that much. So hands on. How good is that? Look at that, hands on. Fuck the flicking, you can just whack them. Just whack them, it doesn't matter, these are mamba proof. These are cat proof. So a bit of a short one this time, thank you for watching guys. Christ, the shit's all over now. On your way out the door, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I do cry myself to sleep every night knowing that only 28% of the people that regularly watch my content are actually subscribed but that's fine, I only sleep for an hour anyway, so it's a short cry, it's a very short cry. And a huge thank you, as always, to my lovely Patreon community, who continue to support this channel as it gets bigger, badder, better, with every video and every new community member that joins our Patreon group. Cheers, my love. I'm out of here.